This is Unit 2, Lesson 10. This is Example 2 uh, of Congruent Complements Theorem. So I have a correction to make on your homework. It should say given triangle ABC, not triangle ABD. So please change that uh, right up here. This should say ABC like it does. Yours says ABD. I apologize for that typo. It happens. All right. So again, make those changes. So we're going to set up our two columns. If you're going to use the flow proof, use the flow proof. I'm just going to go through again the two columns. We've been using it. We will go over again the flow proof format um, when we start talking more about triangle proofs um, in our fourth unit. That is where they will be most useful. But again, you can check the answer key uh, to the lesson uh, that will be posted tomorrow. So let's annotate our diagram. Again, we have these angles that are being named with three numbers. I'm just going to call this one, two, and three. All right, so this ABC is angle one, CBD is angle two, DBE is angle three, and we said CBD is angle two. All right, so we're going to get started here. We're going to write our given information. So angle ABC and angle CBD are complementary. We know this is given. And angle DBE and angle CBD form a right angle. Right. I'm going to use the numbers from here on out rather than the names, but I'm going to state the given information given what they gave me. Okay, so what do I know? I know that from this first given statement that angle 1 plus angle 2, again that's what I'm calling these, equal 90 degrees. And that comes from the definition of complementary angles. Perfect. Okay, so I've used that information for now. Now I'm going to use the second piece of given information. Okay, so I know that angle, uh, what do I know? I know that angle 3 plus angle 2 equals all of angle ABC. And that's partition. If I add the parts, I get the whole. And they said that angle 2 and angle 3, or the names above, right, that's what I'm calling these, um, form a right angle. So what does that mean? So that means that the measure of angle ABC equals 90 degrees. And that comes from the definition of a right angle. All right, so... Again, we're trying to get both of these to have 90 on them, right, this and this, so that I can use congruent complements theorem. Well, how do I do that? I substitute. That's our favorite one, right? Angle 3 plus angle 2 equals 90. Since both of these have ABC, and we can replace the ABC with one of the other values. Substitution. Okie dokie. So now what do I know? Well, I have two equations, right? I have this equation and I have this equation, both of which equal this 90 degrees, right? This 90 degrees here. So we have two pairs of equations that are complementary, okay? And we know that angle two is in both. So we can say that six Angle 2 is equal to angle 2, or the measure of angle 2, we should say. That is reflexive. Okay. Let's see if I can click the extend a page there. All right, so I know... Th I don't know why it keeps doing that to me. This and this are the same, and they both sum to 90. So what did we just learn above? That is congruent complements theorem. So we can say that angle 1 is, 
the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 3. And if you want to make a separate statement, angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. So 7 is congruent complements theorem. And again, if you don't remember what that says, that says that if two angles are complementary or sum to 90 to the same angle, which is our angle 2, then those two angles are congruent. So again, you can remember the name of it, or you can have to write what that theorem states. And eight angles that are equal in measure are congruent. So again, we used equal through all of the proof above. The final part of the proof was to state that they are equal, I'm sorry, congruent. And so we can just write this final statement here, this final reason uh, to switch that notation from equal signs to a congruency sign.